Welcome to the Lockdown Economy, a social nonprofit initiative by the think tank Alta Contacts to help small businesses and self-employed professionals overcome the challenges of the pandemic and reactivate the economy. My name is Karen Rickes, and today our guest is Sarah Linda Forer. Sarah is a designer of central tableware based in Amsterdam. She designs high quality organic central tableware, mostly for high-end restaurants to reconnect us with our food what we eat and where, we, where it comes from. Hello, Sarah, how are you today? Hi, I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm good too, thank you so much. Uh, well, Sarah, this is your second interview with the lockdown economy. A couple of months ago, you uh, spoke with, uh, with us about sort of how your customer base fell away at the beginning of, let's say, both the first and the second uh, lockdown as restaurants had to close down. And as a response, you were sort of working on a web shop to reach, um, well, consumers as well as businesses. Uh, now that the pandemic has progressed um, longer, how are you currently affected by the pandemic in your business? Um, well, actually, at this point, it's going better than ever. <laughs> so I'm, for some reason, I don't know. Um, so when we talked last time, um, I was making ho homemade stuff, let's say, in my studio, uh, little ceramic pieces that I was creating and firing in my studio which couldn't really be skilled or I mean it was very like a uh, small um, uh, and short-term solution um, and then um, after I think after the summer I put my web shop online with the ceramics that I actually make in France so the porcelain pieces mm -hmm. that I also sell to restaurants um, and that went quite well and then around the same time I think restaurants started to look to the future again instead of only problem solving in the present and so the ones that are kind of fine in the long term uh, i think they they're daring to uh, think about the future and see what they can change in the restaurant and so they're thinking about new plates fortunately so um yeah there's actually quite some 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 stuff happening with restaurants which is nice uh and also got um I'm going to work with a big, big department store in the Netherlands. So that's also really nice. So the consumer part is now starting to be good and the restaurant part is starting to revive. So I think, um, yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's better than I expected. Okay, that's really good to hear. So uh, you were indeed able to uh, score or rescore some uh, some clients now that restaurants are sort of more willing to again look uh, at yeah. the long-term future and not really stay in the present too much. That's really good to hear. Um, so were you able to um, sort of, because you mentioned that for working with uh, or working towards consumer needs in particular, rather than businesses, um, it requires a lot of investment because it requires you to actually sort of work towards stock rather than really just producing as you receive the orders. Um, how's that transition been for you? Well, I actually only did one big order to have some stock for the web shop, which is now almost empty. So I. I did a new order, but I'm waiting for it. It takes a long time. Somehow the factory is also really busy these days. So, mm -hmm. um, so I mean, it's it's still risky when I I re I make a new order, which this time is also a bit bigger than the first time. So I never know, of course, if I'm going to sell everything. But I think you know, the more uh, customers I have, the more um, it will spread, and then even more will come, hopefully. So. Um, I think it will be fine. It's also not that big of an order, and the restaurant orders that are coming are backing me up for this so it's it's fine it's a um, different way of working it's a bit more risky but it's interesting it's also a bit of more of a um a guess so mm -hmm. you have to think, okay are people going to buy more of this or more of that and you never really know <laughs> yeah but you know a lot so yeah it's nice okay that's good to hear so yeah it's in probably indeed a bit of a gamble to wanting to yeah. really yeah guess what uh, people might want to to order um do you think that uh, the, for example, clients such as the big department store, that that will also provide you with some stability um, in terms of order size, for example? I can't really say because they, they just put their first order now. And for them, it's also the first time they work with something um, like this. So it's very mm -hmm. different from the usual ceramics and tableware. So they don't really know, you know, how it's going to be. So I don't think it will give me stability quite yet, unless you know it's sold like this and they place a new one and a new one. But um, I think it takes some time to realize uh, what people want more, and then they can buy more of that and everything. But hopefully, yes, it will give me more, a bit more stability, also more credibility and and more reach. So 
in any case, it will be good. <laughs> All right, that sounds good. Um, so you, we already mentioned uh, your supplier in uh, France, and you mentioned earlier that, of course, the supplier, um, the manufacturer was affected by, uh, yeah, governmental measures in France as mm -hmm. well. Um, do you sort of know what their situation is right now? Are they able, now that the factory seems busy, um, it seems like they got uh, to work quite okay as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know what the measures are now, and except for wearing masks everywhere. Mm. But I think everybody's back to work and they have some big orders. And um, yeah, so I think it's, they found a way to cope with it and it's fine again. Okay, that's great. Uh, so yeah, in light of that, uh, what are sort of some some of the trends you see in your environment? So maybe both customers, suppliers, or competitors even, um, how they are coping with the um, situation right now? Um, I'm not sure, but I think um, the focus on consumers is bigger than ever for mm -hmm. everybody. Yeah. And also the online focus. So I think in France, I'm not even sure right now if the shops can be, yeah, I think shops are open. But I mean, there's still a lot of measure. So I think people are not really shopping in the streets like before still. So everybody's focusing online. I think a lot of them needed to um, upskill their onli online game a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think everybody has <laughs> because they had to. So yeah, everybody learned a lot and uh, it's, it's pretty good for in that sense, you know, that, that these things had to be hurried a bit. You know, because like for me, I was thinking, oh, one day I will do consumer market and I will do an online store, but then I never did. Now I had to. So it, it just, yeah, it kicks your ass to do it a little bit faster. I think it's the yeah. same for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So there was a bit of a, yeah, more force uh, behind actually uh, doing some, creating some change to the, to the business model. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as you mentioned it, uh, sort of the, the web shop was sort of in the planning, uh, but you also mentioned that yeah, maybe some of the sort of more technical skills were something that you never really learned before. So sort of looking back on establishing the web shop now, uh, do you think it was a, uh, yeah, sort of a smooth introduction? Um, what are some of your learnings um, in that process? Um, yeah, I mean, for now, I'm still doing everything myself. So it's not mm -hmm. like I, it, it's not impossible. It's not really big things that I had to learn. I already had a web shop before and um, I mean, it's a lot of work, but you can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, photography is a, even more work. Um, but the other part is the marketing and, and having this online presence, which is really important now. And that I have a bit of help now with. Um, could be more <laughs> because it's just so much work and so much content yeah. and so much photography. But uh, it's interesting. And I mean, it's, yeah, I definitely learned um, more not necessarily about making the web shop, but about what's important to show and what what is the text like, what do you put on there, what do you not put on there, and um, yeah, the communication part and the, the clarity, I think. Yeah, that's good to good to hear that you have some uh, help now with the marketing. Um, so yeah, who's helping you um, with that? Did you expand your team a bit, or is it still sort of mostly you uh, yeah, it's doing, me, doing the me work? <laughs> I, I have one marketing advisor now she's she works for herself but I uh, we have like a once a month um, talk and then in between little things so she helps me to think what the strategy is and what I should focus on and then I actually do the work okay that's good so you she advises you and then uh, you're the one to to implement it then for yeah. your own uh, social media presence okay yeah. that sounds good um, so yeah, so you did mention that the situation then in general for you uh, right now is, is quite good, uh, given the given the circumstances. Um, what are you sort of then at the moment doing to uh, yeah really make the most of the situation and um, yeah sort of continuing that uh, that high if we want to call it that. Yeah. Um, well, bettering the web shop all the time. <laughs> it's always something to do better. Uh, having new stock and that means also different pieces, new photography, everything. Um, and also, I, I have this feeling that at the moment, the restaurants that are um, not going bankrupt, they look towards the future and they're willing to, to think about new pieces and new table and new interiors and everything. So I am emailing more. I'm starting again to contact restaurants, which I didn't do for the whole pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think it's a time to really think what's important for everybody, what you should focus on, what do you want to put money in and then do it because now there is time you know there is space yeah, yeah. i see 
uh, really nice. Um, did you, um, yeah, when you say that you started reaching out to, to restaurants again, um, that's of course really good that that's possible again. Um, yeah, did you already receive maybe some sort of positive uh, responses that in line with what you discussed that they are also more looking towards the future now that they're also, yeah, coming yeah. back to, uh, to the tableware? Yeah, a lot of them are, uh, or the ones that I spoke are really doing a whole like refurbishing. So it's the table or interior, maybe the communication design, a lot of things. So they're really taking their time to redo the whole thing. Um, yeah, so that's really nice. And I think tableware is always a big part of it. And uh, so I feel re really lucky to have, you know, people, restaurants that have the money to, to do that right now, you know, that are not just trying to survive. So that's really yes, nice. Yes, definitely. That yeah. sounds really good. Um, well, in uh, in light of that, um, knowing that sort of everyone is starting to come back around, uh, what are you sort of focusing on then in the uh, next couple of months? Sort of, um, yeah, trying to maybe secure what you have um, right now. Um, well, um, upscaling my marketing game. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so in, I am collaborating a lot, part, partnering up with different people and uh, working on my journal, basically working on, on like my online world and, and um, inspiration, information, everything that comes with what I do. Um, I want to work on that more. And that means working with a lot of people that have their own expertise in on a topic related to it. So, yeah, I think right now it's a lot about opening up, collaborating and communicating. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Well, um, in light of that, um, my uh, sort of uh, final question to you that you will probably remember from your uh, first interview is then very much related to that, uh, asking for help uh, collaborating with, with experts. Um, so could you maybe name uh, three things that sort of you, uh, you could need help with um, at the moment? Um, well, I can always have help with business strategy, you know, because I'm not a born business person <laughs> so i'm more creative so everything that has to do with uh, strategy behind the scenes is, is really nice to have advice on marketing um because now i have advice but the, the doing is so much work so mm -hmm. in that sense, you can always need some help um and yeah so i'm broadening this journal thing so i have this journal where guest writers can write about something they are experts in anything related to food sustainability beauty everything that connects pleasure and sustainability in a way mm -hmm. so if anybody wants to write something let me know <laughs> okay great we'll uh, broadcast your message uh, to the world uh, thank you very much for your input um, sarah linda and thank you for everyone who joined us today and watched our video um, sarah linda any last words uh, to our viewers well i feel there's hope in the air even though in a way we're all desperate to to know when will the end be and we still don't know even though the vaccine is there and everything is still unclear um but i feel there's hope maybe also because spring is coming so mm -hmm. i would say just keep going <laughs> and um yeah just don't give up and uh and i don't know if that's also for more people this sense of like opening up and communicating um if you can do that because it just gives so much inspiration and knowledge and opportunity to open up and partner up and yeah so i would do that <laughs> very well said uh, that's the optimism i think we all need um, at the moment um feel free to contact sarah linda using the links in the description of the video um, below i invite you to like this video and subscribe to our channel on our channel you can find many more insights from entrepreneurs in many different countries and um, business sectors so have a look and stay tuned